Tomorrow, the president plans to sign into law a bipartisan bill on same-sex marriage after what the White House called a, quote, very good week of delivering for voters. That optimism, despite a jolt to the new 51-seat Senate majority in Senator Kirsten Sinema's party switch. Here to analyze all this and more is our Politics Monday team. Amy Walter of the Cook Political Report with Amy Walter and Tamara Keith of NPR. And welcome to you both. Good to see you. Thank you. So I thought it's a good time to pull together some of the headlines we've been seeing around the president and kind of get some perspective on what comes next. The last few weeks, you saw the president's party outperform history in the midterms. Gas prices are down. They had a legislative win codifying same-sex and interracial marriage protections. They brought Brittany Griner home. At this point, Tam, when you look at it, if the president chooses to run again, is he primary proof? Well, I've been talking to Democratic consultants and others who are following this very closely, pollsters, and their sense is, yeah, maybe there could be some sort of gadfly who would come along who might try to run in a primary. But, but Joe Biden has cleared the field. And the reality is that an incumbent president should easily clear the field. And um, in, in the past, I mean, nobody was asking, is Barack Obama going to run for re-election? What's up with that? Um, and his approval rating was in, in the same general neighborhood as Biden's. What, what one person told me is that, you know, at this point, with the sort of hyper-partisanship and polarization as it is, um, he, you don't have to be widely beloved, even in your own party, um, to be a strong contender, uh, depending on what the other party does. Amy, what do you think? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. The takeaway from the midterm elections was Donald Trump had a terrible night. Joe Biden had a great night. But when you look at the data in terms of how people see both of those candidates, it doesn't look like either one had a particularly great um, night mm -hmm. or uh, midterm election. Several days. The president, several <laughs> days, <laughs> however long it took to, to get all that uh, going. Um, president Biden's approval ratings, somewhere around 42 percent. Now, Tam's right. We're in a really polarized country era, so it's rare that you're going to see the president's approval rating pop very high, mm -hmm. but still didn't really get any sort of bump from overcoming uh, the, the traditional midterm drag, nor any of the things that you just mentioned about gas prices, et cetera. It's not translating to support for Biden. There was a poll that came out, I think it was uh, this week uh, or late last week, only 57, uh, actually more than 57 percent of Democrats, 66 percent of independents don't want to see Joe mm. Biden running. And finally, this was from Dem a Democratic polling firm that came out with, here's our analysis of what happened in 2022. Mm -hmm. This is also the polling firm that does Joe Biden's polling. Uh, they said Democrats overperformed in this election because voters disliked Republican candidates more, not because voters liked Democrats more than we thought. So that, There's that polarization again. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, we know his uh, agenda ahead could be complicated slightly by the fact that one sitting Democrat senator decided to switch her party affiliation, right. this Kirsten Sinema in Arizona, from Democrat to independent. Uh, Politico's reporting today, by the way, that Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego seems to be taking another step towards potentially challenging cinema in 2024. He signed up with a major Democratic polling firm. He was asked about possibly running this morning on MSNBC. Here's what he had to say. I'm going to listen to my family over the holidays. I have a big Latino family that's going to come in uh, this <laughs> over uh, Christmas. Uh, it's going to be uh, a very, very crowded house. Uh, but then after that, we'll be making a decision, and we'll be making a decision based on what's best for Arizona and what based on what I hear from the actual constituents of Arizona. Tim, does he run? And if he does, does he risk splitting Democrat voters there? I will say that a lot of people are spending a lot of time with their families this holiday <laughs> making big life decisions about their political futures, including the president we just talked about uh, and uh, several Republicans who are spending a lot of time with their families trying to decide whether to run for president. The calculation for Democrats is Kirsten Sinema is now an independent who is you know, votes with Democrats like 90 percent of the time, something like that. She is going to stay on committees, uh, giving them uh, the, the majority in the Senate. Mm -hmm. There are already two other independents who caucus with Democrats. Uh, so she's not uh, blazing a path there necessarily. Um, the question, though, is if she's an independent, she doesn't have to run in a Democratic primary. That was obviously, even though she would not uh, cop, cop to that, um, 
that is obviously part of the calculation in deciding to be an independent is avoiding a primary that Congressman Gallego was basically telegraphing. Um, so the question, though, for Democrats is, if it's a three-way race, if it is a Democratic nominee, a, an independent who leans Democratic, and a Republican, well, then do the Democrat and the independent who used to be a Democrat split the, the you know, left-leaning mm -hmm. uh, center-left vote? And what does that mean? Does that just give a Republican an easy path yeah. to winning that Senate? Yeah. What does the what does the president do? Yeah. Does yeah. he endorse? What does the what does the, the party do? The party do? Yeah. It's a m very complicated dance because she didn't switch parties in the sense right we've seen in previous years, Arlen Specter, Jim Jeffords, uh, in Vermont. But being an independent means well, the party itself is not you know you're not part of any party op apparatus. It's also important because Arizona is not just about the Senate race, that's a critical Senate race, but for the presidential contest to have the Democratic Party divided mm -hmm. is quite problematic. And, uh, you know, they're, what has helped Democrats in Arizona for these past few years, since 2018, they've been incredibly united, uh, haven't had the kind of knock down, drag out primary fights like Republicans have had. Can I ask you about Republicans in Arizona before yeah. we go? We know that the former Republican gubernatorial candidate, Carrie Lake, has refused to concede, right. is now challenging that loss in court, asking a court to throw out all the results from Maricopa County, the state's most populous county, and either declare her the winner or rerun the election in that county. Amy, what does this tell us about Republican voters and future candidates in Arizona? Right. Well, the she is actually unique. Of all the candidates who did support uh, President, uh, former President Donald Trump's contention that the election actually was rigged or stolen, um, they all conceded, or at least have not gone to the links that Carrie Lake has gone to. What's really important to remember about if throwing out Maricopa County, you know who the top vote getter in Maricopa County was? Republican state treasurer, got the most votes in Maricopa County. Uh, the second most was Mark Kelly, the Democrat, and then it was Carrie Lake. So it's if you throw out all those votes, you also throw out a lot of Republican winners. A few seconds we have left, Tim. How do you look at this? Uh, well, the, the judicial process is part of the election system. People can appeal things to courts. But then when courts weigh in, and, and in the case of 2020, President Trump, former President Trump's cases were all thrown out, um, then that's when it's over. And it looks like with the story we're going to be following for a very long time, yes, Arizona indeed. continues to be interesting Always. for yes. the near and far future. Tamara Keith, Amy Walter, thanks so much. You're welcome. You're welcome.